Happy Thanksgiving. If you can't be happy, I'm sorry. <laughs> but when you think about the manifold blessings that God has bestowed upon us, if we can't be happy just with that, we're a sad bunch of people. Some of us have had the privilege of of growing up in a Christian home, and some of us have not. And some of us may take things for granted because we've had that Christian influence in our lives since we were children. And we've seen a lot, and we've heard a lot. But for us who have not had that experience... I am ecstatically grateful for what God has done for me personally. How God has saved me. How God is continuing to heal me. How God is leading me. How God is allowing me to bless His people. And we were inspired with this thought, with this seasonal thought, during Thanksgiving. For this reason we are called. Well, how could that be a good Thanksgiving message? Just hold on to your chairs. <laughs> Embrace your teeth in your mouth. Our scripture text is found in Ephesians 9 and 12, 9 through 12, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Now, the previous verses of Scripture that Paul is addressing to the Ephesians, he is reminding them that we have been blessed in heavenly places with all spiritual gifts and spiritual blessings. We've been chosen before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. We have been predestined to be adopted as sons of God, sonship through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have been forgiven of our sins. Hallelujah. We've been forgiven. And because of the forgiveness of sins, we are able to stand in the grace of God that He has given to us. You see, the first grace is that He forgives us of, of our sins. The second grace is that we're not perfect, but we bear and forbear with one another. And that God gives us the grace to endure things. He gives us His grace. There's a lot for us to give thanks to the Lord as we enter into this season of remembrance how blessed we are. Sometimes we don't realize how blessed we are. We don't think about how blessed we are. We think about what is not a blessing. But you see, in Christ Jesus, it's always a blessing. And I'm here today to hope you to look at your blessings in a different aspect, things that perhaps you will not consider. Families will gather around a table to enjoy every kind of food group that accompanies the turkey. There will be extra grace for members of the family 
who always seem somehow to create family drama when we get together. <laughs> I'm so glad that we can pass the grace. The grace to go with the mashed potatoes. The grace to go with the candied yams. The grace to go with the meat, vegetables, and all of that because we have come to realize that none of us are perfect. Families take this time to pause and to think about some of the good things that they're grateful for. The Apostle Paul is reminding us and gives us more of a reason to be thankful for God's provisions toward us. We weren't a people, but now we are a people. We are the people of God. We weren't chosen, but now we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, that we should glorify God in all of our substance and all of our things. He reminds us in this text that we have come into an inheritance of grace on which we stand, which we live, which we die, and which we live again. It was God's provision for us by the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that of his son Jesus, that gives us the privilege of this great blessing. We give thanks and glory to the Lord of hosts. Amen and amen and amen. It was the cons uh, uh, consummation of God's plan to restore his children to full fellowship with the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He wanted us to have fellowship with himself. And he looked through heaven to find something to buy us back into relationship, and there was nothing found. So God himself wrapped himself in human flesh and came into the world to dwell among rebels and sinners, the scum of the earth, to buy us back, to bring us into relationship. How can it be that a holy God would give up his glorious surroundings to live among us? Have you ever thought about that? All around him in this condemned world were broken people desperately trying to survive the curse of condemnation. Man's curse of man's inhumanity to man. There was not a person who understood the depth and breadth of the pain brought about by separation from the love of a father. I don't know how many people in here were fatherless. But there is something within us that yearns to have that relationship with our earthly father. Maybe your father was always there. Some of us experience desertion by a father. But that yearning was still there. That need was still there to have the presence of your father to help you to grow and to develop and to mature into a good person. All people want is to be loved, accepted, forgiven, in order that they may feel value by you and I. And God had to do that for us. Ephesians 2.10 NIV says, For we are God's handiwork 
created in Christ Jesus to do good works. To do good works. To do good works. Not to be idle, but to do good works. But to make your presence here on the earth count because of the good works that you're doing, because of the gifting that God has given you through his Holy Spirit. We're here to do good works. As a believer, we have to be aware and on guard that the enemy of our souls and the powers of darkness wish, wishes to prevail against us to snuff out our light that resides within us because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. For those of us who are called, we have been given responsibility, first of all. That first responsibility is to bring light into a world of darkness. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify the Father. We've been called into doing good works. Works that last. Works that are eternal. Works that have great value. We've been called to do that. For those of us who have been called, we have been given the responsibility to shine light. Matthew 5, 16, as Jesus instructs us, let our light so shine before men that they glorify our Father. The called have been given authority. You've been given authority, not the authority of the world, but you've been given the authority of God through his word. You see, you have the authority to tell Satan, get behind me, dude. You have no part in this. Get behind me in the name of Jesus. See, there is authority in the name of Jesus because Jesus is the living word of God. And as a believer, we have the authority of God on our side. And sometimes we take things unnecessary because we do not exercise the authority that God has given us as believers. And you ought to say amen, but if you don't, that's okay too. <laughs> we just take stuff and take stuff and take stuff. And then we complain, but God gives us authority. And we just allow things to happen because we don't exercise that authority. Whatever is made by human hands comes with an expiration date. Hello. <laughs> oh, I'm going to ho hold on to this till, you know, till heaven opens up and Jesus returns. I thought I was going to hold on to my vehicle. I, I said, I, I'm going to drive it till the tires fall off. <laughs> but that didn't happen because it was bleeding me to death. You see, anything that is made by man has an expiration date. And I will admit to admitted that there have been many inventions made by man that has blessed the nations, but it's not eternal. It's not going to last. Nothing remains the same but one solitary thing, and that is the Word of God. Before you and I came on the scene, there was the Word of God. 
Before our parents came on the scene, there was the Word of God. Before our parents' parents came on the scene, there was the Word of God. And after we've all gone to our place of rest, the Word of God is going to remain. It's going to prevail. Jesus says heaven and earth is going to pass away. But guess what? Not my word. (laughs) He's going to accomplish everything that he said he would accomplish. The word of God is the same yesterday. Did you read the word of God yesterday? Did it change? We read the word of God today. Did it change? We read the word of God tomorrow. Is it going to change? Absolutely not. It is never going to change. Ephesians 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit joints marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The word of God does that. And see, the Holy Spirit comes along with the word of God, and he says, I'm going to remind you, Everything that has been said in the Word of God from Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit makes us aware and equipped. You see, the devil is not happy about this message. But people are being free. The called have been given the, given the purpose to live life to the fullest. Without regrets. I never want to live with regrets. You know, sometimes you have a conversation with people, and they say, well, you know, there was a time I could have, I wished I have. I don't want that. I want to be able to experience all that God has in store for me. I want to live a life that is full and meaningful and abundant. Not just here, but as I make my exit. Because we live on purpose, we look for ways to bring glory to God by our our everyday conduct and lifestyle in the midst of unbelievers. The call have been given the confidence that God is at work within them to do his will, that the world may have opportunity to receive his truth, which is Jesus Christ. A life based in truth will enable you to free those individuals who are held captive. Um, Telling untruths is not an option for the believer, regardless how painful the truth may be. It's not an option. It's not an option to... Put blinders on from the truth to satisfy a need or to satisfy someone. Because it is the truth that sets those who are in captivity free. And I was a captive. I was a captive by the enemy. I was under his tutelage. I was under his guidance. But I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ one day sitting next to Gloria and all nine brothers and sisters on a wooden bench back in Gary, Indiana. And I was just overcome by the conviction of the Holy Spirit that seized my heart. And I couldn't breathe. I felt like that I had to do something to breathe. In those days, there was an altar call, and we went forth, and we went into a prayer room, and I went into that prayer room, and there were elders who prayed for me, and I tell you, I have not been the same since. Glory to God. Because I could have ended up like some of my friends, in jail or dead. 
but I'm here to testify of the goodness of God. I'm here to testify that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, that cleansing gives us another day of opportunity to do the right thing. The call have confidence. The called have been given grace to do God's will as imperfect people. Hello. We have been reconciled by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to look at others through the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, we did not want people to judge us when we were going through our situations. So therefore, when we come to be Christ-like, we don't want to look and judge other people as they're going through their situations. We look at people through the blood of Jesus Christ, knowing that all they need is to say yes to the Lord. And they will have a resolution inside. It doesn't mean that the problems go away. God gives you the grace to deal with them. The call have access that has been given access to the Father by Jesus Christ who intercedes for us at the throne of God according to Romans 5, 2. We don't have to wait in line. Hello. Praise God. We don't have to get up early in the morning and get a tent and sleep out like some people do on Black Friday. I've always thought, Black Friday, what does that mean? <laughs> is, is Black Friday a, a day for black people to have free stuff? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Our application is we are to be led by the Spirit of God. Not by our emotions, not by people's opinions, not by public opinions, but we are to be led by the Spirit of God. We can't ignore the urging of the Spirit of God and be Christians, and be filled with the Spirit. We live under different rules. Hello. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. We live under different rules. We do. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. If we want to remain children of God, let us be led by the Spirit of God. We have access to the highest authority. Hallelujah. I don't have to write letters to the president. I have access to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I have access to pour out my heart before him. I have access into his presence because of Jesus Christ. We are not ashamed of being different. Think about that. Now, if you found somebody like Ephesians, uh, I believe Ephesians 4, uh, 17 says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of Christ concerning you. Now, we give thanks in everything, not for everything. You see, as, as long as we live, there is going to be plenty opportunity to give thanks. Our hearing may be impaired. Thank you, Lord. Our sight may go dim. Thank you, Lord. 
Our steps may not be as quick as they were. Thank you, Lord. We might not be able to stand correctly. Thank you, Lord. We may have to lay on a bed of affliction. Thank you, Lord. We may lose our dearest loved one. Thank you, Lord. And everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Now, people will look at you weird when things happen and you say, well, thank the Lord. Well, thank you, Jesus. I, I, I did this and I thank you. They look at you weird as if you're out of space and out of touch. But see, a thankful heart is a grateful heart. And when you are thankful, you can go through a lot, my brothers and sisters. You can go through a lot. You'll look back over your life and wonder how you got to where you are. But it's because you've given the Lord thanksgiving for all of his benefits and his blessings. You see, we don't have an option not to be thankful. Romans says all things work together for the good of them that love God are called to his purpose. So minimize your complaining and turning it into thanksgiving. And you will discover the joy and the peace of God's presence with you. Is this a thanksgiving? Is this a thanksgiving message? Yes. Are you thankful for what God has done in your life yes. and continue to do in your life? Yes. Lord, I am so grateful to serve with the people who are grateful and who thank you. Let us stand. Let me give you the benediction. Father God, we are so grateful for how graciously you love us and how tenderly you discipline us. Father, we pray for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God dwelling in us richly may bring glory and honor and praise to you in the expansion of your kingdom through each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.